We should understand that July 4th, 1776, in many ways, represents a counter-revolution. That is to say that what helped to prompt July 4th, 1776, was the perception amongst European settlers on the North American mainland that London was moving rapidly towards abolition. This perception was prompted by Somerset's case, a case decided in London in June 1772, which seemed to suggest that abolition, which not only was going to be ratified in London itself, was going to cross the Atlantic and basically uh, sweep through the mainland, thereby jeopardizing numerous fortunes not only based upon slavery, but the slave trade. That's the short answer. The longer answer would involve going back to another revolution, that is to say the so-called Glorious Revolution in England in 1688, which among other things involved a step back for the monarch, for the monarch, the king, and a step forward for the rising merchant class. This led to a deregulation of the African slave trade, that is to say the Royal African Company, theretofore had been in control of the slave trade. But with the rising power of the merchant class, this slave trade was deregulated, leading to what I call free trade in Africans. That is to say, merchants then descended upon the African continent, manacling and handcuffing every African in sight with the energy of demented and crazed bees, dragging them across the Atlantic, particularly to the Caribbean and to the North American mainland. This was prompted by the fact that the profits for the slave trade were tremendous, sometimes up to 1,600 or 1,700 percent. And as you know, uh, there are those even today who will sell their firstborn for such a profit. This, on the one hand, helped to boost the productive forces, both in the Caribbean and on the mainland, but it led to numerous slave revolts, not least in the Caribbean, but also on the mainland, which helped to give the mainlanders second thoughts about London's tentative steps towards abolition. Mm -hmm.